a city program is working to make older homes safer by removing lead-based paint. The number of executions in Texas seen a decline, plus a spike in flu numbers in Bear County and Texas. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9. Streaming from here in the KSAT 12 newsroom, I'm Tiffany Huertas filling in for Myra Arthur. New tonight, two more arrests made in the South Park Mall shooting from earlier this month. 17-year-olds John Angel Cervantes and Marquise Fanning are both facing multiple charges, including for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. This is in connection to a shooting at the mall back on the 18th of this month. Three men and a woman were hurt. Tonight's arrest comes after the arrest of two other men a little more than a week ago. Police previously said the shooting was targeted but have not released a motive. According to a department spokeswoman, there could be more arrest in the case. A San Antonio program is helping families and children live in healthier, safer homes. The program's target is older houses. They can be beautiful, but often contain lead-based paint, which can pose a real health risk for children. Tonight, we're taking a look at what the city is doing to address the issue. This project is a very underutilized program. Lead-based paint is invisible. It's not something that gets a lot of attention in a household. The City of San Antonio's Green and Healthy Homes Initiative helps owners and landlords of residential properties create a safe environment for families. The program helps remove lead-based paint from homes. The household components that can test positive or usually test positive for lead-based paint include exterior and interior walls, window sills, floors, kitchen cabinets, and even the soil outside the home. Jennifer Buxton with the Neighborhood and Housing Services Department says the city received a grant from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for $4.6 million to help remove lead-based paint from homes. Buxton says since the program started in 2000, 1,600 homes have been remediated. The new three-year grant will allow the city to help 230 more. They will scrape and paint or remove and replace things such as windows. There are many requirements to qualify for the program. For example, the house must have been built prior to 1978. That's the year federal government began restricting the use of lead in household paint. Another requirement, there must be a child in the home under the age of six. If a household qualifies, then we send a consultant out and they actually test the surfaces for lead-based paint. Once that occurs, then we can send out a contractor and the contractors that are state qualified, state certified, abate or remediate that lead-based paint. Buxton says while they have been helping about 70 homes a year, they want to reach more people. One of the things that's difficult about this program is getting families in and getting them tested. They sometimes don't know that they have a problem or a child that's been affected by lead-based paint. Exposure to lead can be especially harmful to young children. The CDC says some possible health effects include damage to the brain and nervous system, slowed growth and development, learning and behavior problems, plus hearing and speech problems. These health effects can cause lower IQ and impact a child's ability to focus. Buxton believes the city's program is making a big difference. It helps children get healthier outcomes, whether that be their physical health and not have health issues down the road. It can also impact their, their educational outcomes. Jennifer Buxton says one of the areas they are targeting include neighborhoods around the San Antonio Independent School District. They are accepting applications. To learn more, visit ksat.com slash news at 9. For the fifth year in a row, executions in Texas are down. This is according to new data released by the Texas Coalition to abolish the death penalty. The numbers show that Texas executed 13 inmates in 2018 and 9 in 2019. The imposition of the death penalty by juries has also dropped. Local attorney and death penalty opponent Warren Wolf says he sees this as a sign that we're evolving, but many still favor executions in some cases. Bear County District Attorney plans to seek the death penalty for Otis McCain. The man accused of gunning down SAPD detective Benjamin Marconi. I believe that the death penalty should be reserved for the worst of the worst. The Texas Tribune reports there are currently 215 inmates on Texas death row. A former local high school football star killed in a shooting. Australia continues to deal with wildfires that have been burning since August and a scientist sentenced for helping to create the world's first gene edited babies. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. 
here at home, the victim of a deadly early morning shooting has been identified as a former standout Madison High School football player. Aiden Hoffman was on Christmas break from his freshman year in college. San Antonio police were called out to O'Connor Road near Nacogdoches at around 12.30 a.m. Officers say Hoffman crashed his car into a curb and barrier. He had a bullet wound to his upper body. He was sent to the hospital where he later died. In Australia, no sign of relief as several wildfires continue to burn across the region. Helicopters have been deployed to pour water on the fires, but officials have been saying for weeks that the fires are too big to put out, and the best hope is for rain and weather conditions to ease up. The political backlash against the government for how it's handled this crisis has been strong. The Prime Minister criticized for his vacation in Hawaii as the fires raged and for downplaying the role of climate change in the heat wave that has exacerbated conditions. New Year's fireworks have been canceled across much of the country. Well, today, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar confirmed he has ordered a full audit of current employees to make sure all background checks are accurate. This after a civilian employee was arrested for a shooting that happened on Saturday. Andrew Ramos is accused of shooting a relative at a strip mall. While reviewing his file, investigators found he was arrested for robbery in 2014. The case was later dismissed. The sheriff says Ramos was hired under a previous administration. I'm sick and tired of being embarrassed uh, by people that should have never been allowed to set foot in this building. Uh, and yesterday's arrest was a perfect example. Salazar says under current stricter hiring standards, Ramos would never have been hired. A Chinese scientist who helped create the world's first gene-edited babies now behind bars. A court sentenced Ha Zhengkui to three years in prison for altering the DNA of three babies before birth when they were embryos. He will also have to pay a fine. The scientist claimed he altered the DNA to reduce the risk of them contracting HIV. But his claim led to backlash from the international medical community. A wanted Florida man gave himself away with an Instagram live video. Sheriff's deputies were able to locate the man while he was live streaming. They surrounded the home and the suspect eventually surrendered. He was wanted on weapons charges and grand theft auto. Microsoft is suing North Korea linked hackers for targeting users in the U.S. The tech company claimed hackers went after Microsoft users by impersonating the company. Those hackers are accused of tricking people into offering up passwords and other sensitive information. Caught on camera in Massachusetts, a car wash turns into a car crash. The driver of a pickup truck somehow lost control and backed over a car in a self-service bay, crushing it. Investigators believe the truck pedal may have become pinned under a floor mat. The truck's driver and a woman in the car were treated with non-life-threatening injuries. Elon Musk says his giant tunnel under Las Vegas will be fully operational next year. The tunnel will connect the Las Vegas Convention Center to the Strip. Passengers will be transported via autonomous vehicles reaching speeds of 155 miles per hour. A man receives his father's long-lost Purple Heart at a ceremony here in San Antonio. Charles Cook was killed on December 1, 1944, five days before his son, Forrest, was born. While he never knew his father, Cook says his mother kept his father's memory alive by saving all of his postcards and love letters from the war. I have a lot of memorabilia of my father, his flag and other medals, but I didn't have this original Purple Heart. So to get it back in the family is just tremendous. To read more about these nine stories, head to ksat.com slash news at nine. So I just got back from California. I was at Big Bear Lake. It was snowing. Oh, cool. Then we went to Santa Monica, and there was sunshine. Yeah, it's, yeah. But something's brewing over there that's going to come this way, it's right? It's true, Tiffany. We are going to see rain chances slowly increase as we head into the new year. But don't worry, rain will hold off through uh, yes. New Year's Eve. That's so good. that's the good news for us. But let's go ahead and talk about today. Uh, the weather today was absolutely beautiful. I mean, we saw tons of blue skies, and we were able to see a high temperature near 65. 
34 degrees, but our morning low was quite chilly. It was 34 this morning uh, and with clear skies out there right now, temperatures are going to fall to near freezing as well tomorrow morning. We're already at 49 degrees in San Antonio. It's 50 at JBSA Randolph, 36 up at Bernie Stage, 41 in Bulverde. And again, temperatures tonight under clear skies and calm winds are really going to fall into the upper 30s, uh, potentially right near about 35 in San Antonio uh, in the potential for a light freeze up in the higher elevations like near Leon Springs, Timberwood Park or even up toward Bernie. So keep that in mind. We've got another freeze. You know, we've had such nice weather over the last couple of days that you may not have had to turn on the heat or the air conditioner. I would suggest turning on the heat this evening. Let's take a look at satellite. It's clear over San Antonio, but you look down south toward Corpus Christi and Laredo. You can see that the clouds have already started to increase. And as we go into tomorrow, the first part will be sunny, but the second part of the day will be completely cloudy. And on top of that, we're also going to see our chance for rain by Wednesday, but this is midnight uh, on January 1st as we ring in the new year. You can see no rain in sight, but then as we go into uh, the day, New Year's Day, we'll start to see some areas of scattered light rain around San Antonio. Don't expect a goalie washer. We are going to see maybe about a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of rain in some places, but most places will only see a few hundredths of an inch of rainfall. Uh, so taking a, this should say Tuesdays, planner, not Friday's planner, Tuesday's planner. Uh, we're going to start off cold tomorrow at 35 degrees and we'll slowly start to see those clouds increase. Uh, we'll be cloudy in the afternoon, 59 degrees with winds from the southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then for New Year's Eve itself, as we ring in the new year, temperatures will fall uh, tomorrow to near 50 degrees by midnight under cloudy skies. Pretty nice weather. Just make sure to take that jacket if you're going to view those fireworks outside. Taking a final look at the forecast again, a cool day tomorrow with those clouds increasing, then just downright chilly on Wednesday. Temperatures will stay in the 40s with that area of light rain uh, and then we'll become windy on Friday and clear out. So Tiffany, the weekend's going to look good. We won't have snow like you did at Be <laughs> Bear Lake, but we will have cold weather to sunny weather in a flash. I'll take it. Thanks, yeah. Sarah. Uh -huh. Now a quick programming note for the next two days. Tomorrow night, instead of airing a normal newscast, we will be showing our year in review special. We put together an extensive look back at 2019. From the crime stories that shocked the city to the biggest political controversies, and of course the stories that were just plain weird. That's streaming tomorrow at 9 p.m. on all our digital platforms. And then on Wednesday, New Year's Day, we will be showing our deep dive of a notable South Texas genre of music. The Rise and Fall of Tejano is a look into the genre's roots, history, golden age, and eventual decline. That's on Wednesday at 9 p.m. on KSAT.com, the KSAT mobile app, and the KSAT TV app available on Roku and other smart TV devices. We'll be back in one minute. SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hi, my name is Mika Rosto. I served six years in the Navy Reserves, and we want to wish all you veterans and active military a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. A 
firearms instructor and reserve sheriff's deputy is being credited with protecting a Fort Worth area congregation from a gunman who opened fire during Sunday services. Jack Wilson shot and killed the gunman within seconds of him opening fire in the White Settlement Church. The whole thing played out over the course of about six seconds. In that time, the attacker killed two people. The suspect has been identified as Keith Kanunin. He had a history of violent crimes, including a 2009 conviction for misdemeanor deadly conduct. My understanding is more of a loner and, and probably going to be very difficult to determine exactly what his motivations were other than maybe mental illness. The two people killed have been identified as 64-year-old Anton Wallace and 67-year-old Richard White. They were longtime congregants and members of the church's security team. Turning to tonight's top stories, new information about the suspect in a stabbing at a Hanukkah celebration in New York. Federal prosecutors have filed hate crime charges against Crafton E. Thomas. Investigators believe the attack was driven by anti-Semitism. They say he had handwritten journals containing anti-Semitic references and had used his phone to look up information on Hitler. Thomas is also facing attempted murder charges brought on by state prosecutors. U.S. tariffs place on Chinese imports ultimately led to job losses and higher prices. That's according to a new Federal Reserve study. The tariffs included those on steel, aluminum, motor vehicles, computers and leather goods. Economists with the Federal Reserve say tariffs on Chinese goods started a trade war and that 10 primary industries were later hit by retaliatory tariffs and higher prices. Science suggests giving can actually ease physical pain. Researchers say recent studies found that people experiencing pain benefit instantly from altruistic acts. For instance, one study found those who volunteer to give blood after an earthquake experience less pain than non-volunteers. Another study found that volunteers helping children of migrant workers experienced less pain and cold temperatures than non-volunteers. Researchers believe that this is because of regions of the brain that react to painful stimulation. They say those areas seem to be deactivated during altruistic acts. New Year's Eve can be a fun time for friends and family, but it can be stressful for our four-legged friends. In this week's Adulting Hacks, RJ Marquez tells us about a few tips to keep pets safe during the holiday. Before you light your fireworks for New Year's Eve, think about how to protect your pets. Here's some advice from Animal Care Services. First, pets don't like loud noises. The pops and booms from fireworks can scare them or cause them to run off, so keep them in a secure or quiet area inside your home if possible. Second, try to provide some toys to occupy your pet while you're out. If your pet is crate trained, make sure they can curl up inside if they get scared. Leave fresh food and water inside and a treat or two wouldn't hurt either. You can also talk to your vet about ways to calm your pet's nerves. Third, never leave pets unattended outside, even in a fenced yard or on a tether. Pets can overreact when they're scared. Dogs could easily dig a hole under the fence to escape the noise. Fourth, protect your pets from pranksters by bringing them inside. There have been many cases where fireworks have been directly shot at pets. Last, ACS reminds owners to have pets microchipped. Animals roaming around the neighborhood are at risk of being picked up by the city's animal care officers. Your pet's ID is their ticket home. City microchip licenses can be implanted anytime during regular ACS business hours. AAA Texas is reminding everyone who is of legal drinking age to have a plan to avoid drinking and driving tomorrow night by making a plan to get home before taking your first sip of alcohol. But as a last resort, AAA is offering a free community service called Tipsy Toe. If you find yourself in need, you can call AAA for a free tow and ride home up to 10 miles. Just call 1-800-AAA-HELP. The service will be available starting at 6 tomorrow evening through 6 a.m. Wednesday. Flu activity is spiking in Bear County and around Texas. Reports from San Antonio Metro Health for the week ending December 14th show a rise in the percentage of doctor visits for flu-like illnesses. That rise is putting the levels above where the county and state were at the same time last flu season. A doctor with UT Health San Antonio says it is too soon to say if this flu season will end up being worse than past years. You know, it's a winter illness and so we do see spikes in the winter. Um, why would it peak a little earlier this year? I don't have an answer for that. 
There has been one reported pediatric flu death in Bear County this season. Complications are more common in young children and the elderly. Even though we are seeing a spike in flu activity, it is not too late to get a shot. To find out what's trending right now, RJ Marquez is here with us. Talk right. to us. Yes, Tiffany. So uh, a lot of cool stories on our website right now. Um, we start first, of course, with uh, Christmas. It is now uh, come and gone so yeah but now it was wonderful people, yeah did you have a good christmas <laughs> yes all right awesome <laughs> um so now we're trying to figure out what you're going to do with that mm. christmas tree uh now that the holiday's over um first of all are, do you um do you have a fake tree or you buy the I real one i have the fake tree Same just here. because mm. i like to you know be yeah. resourceful and just continue <laughs> to use my money <laughs> that's a good point um okay so for those of you that might not uh, have a fake one you guys have the real thing we have a lot of uh, different options here of course, uh, mulching or compost, that's a big one there. Mm -hmm. uh, Home Depot apparently has a program oh, wow. that lets you uh, turn these uh, trees around. So also some good um, landscaping ideas if you have that sort of uh, creativity to kind of oh, like yeah. break it up, make it into that. So a lot of interesting options here. So, all right, moving on here. Uh, interesting quiz that we have on our website right now. The quiz is called were you listening? Can you name 2019's top music? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is interesting. I failed horribly at this. <laughs> I don't know any of these artists or any of these. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know the answer to these questions. A lot of them are based on the Billboard charts, okay. like uh, the top, uh, the year-end top new artist. Okay. Any ideas who that might be? I would da say Baby Lizzo. <laughs> I like how you said the <laughs> <da> Baby. <laughs> Billie Eilish, Lil Nas X. I would say anyway. Billie Eilish or Lizzo. Oh then you would be correct. Okay, so Billie Eilish, I had no idea that, uh, I didn't even know that that was a uh, woman. I didn't know that she was uh, a thing. Oh, yeah. she's amazing. <laughs> she's really big and she actually came to Texas to perform at South by Southwest. Yes. I'm excited uh -huh. for her. So you were into what's in, right? For oh. music and stuff? Oh, I love year? music, You yes. would do good with yes. this. Uh, with this quiz here. Yeah, I did horribly. I got like a 28%. <laughs> you just got one right. I, I guess because you already I took totally it. I <laughs> totally just guessed it and I've taken it like four times. So <laughs> so yeah, check out your uh, 2019 music on knowledge on our website right now. All right, last story of the day. And this is uh, kind of an interesting one here. So Sharon Stone, yes, that Sharon Stone, the uh, very popular actress, um, she had her Bumble account blocked because a lot of users on the dating app thought that it was fake. Wow. Yes. So she actually went to Twitter and said and showed the whole message about her account being um, blocked because a lot of people were like, this can't be real. There's no way Sharon Stone is on Bumble. And Are for you... people that don't know what Bumble okay. is, what is that? Okay. So it's a, it's a dating app. I'm not on Bumble. <laughs> I didn't know. Are you? No, I'm married. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Same here. Um, but we do have a uh, resident Bumbler here. One of our uh, interns, Camelia Juarez, I asked her about it. Good. She said she's on it. She's not a big <laughs> fan of it. She's, I'm not going to share her reasons why she's not a big fan of the uh, dating app, but uh, I thought this was pretty interesting mm -hmm. because that's definitely something. So she was looking to meet I someone? I guess so, yes. She was okay. looking. I mean, she's yeah. human. She's like There you go. everybody else trying to find someone. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is funny because the last line of this article says that she told a magazine that she has very high expectations for the men in her life. So um, I don't know if Bumble's really the place, the place to be going for that, but I, uh, I hey, would see why people would so. would report that because she's a celebrity. <laughs> so I guess, but so. it's yeah, that's where technology is taking us anyway. That's yeah. the future, uh, dating apps and whatnot. Yeah. But and good for her Bumble. looking for love. Yeah, Bumble craziness. <laughs> so um, if you want the uh, full story here and everything else on our website, head over to ksat.com and that is uh, what is trending. Thank right. you so much right. and Thanks, happy new year. Happy to new year to you too. Yeah, <laughs> you guys out there also. We'll be back. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. 
YouTube will begin limiting the data being collected on children's videos in the new year. The rule change is designed to comply with a federal privacy crackdown, but could be a disaster for creators of children's content that relies on ads. This is one of several big privacy initiatives being taken in the new year, which also comes with the new big California data collection law known as the CCPA. And the casual footwear startup Tom's is now owned by its creditors. A consortium of banks is taking ownership of the company from its founder, Blake Mykoski, in a deal that will let Tom's restructure its debt. The company reportedly was unable to pay a $300 million loan that is due next year. And WeWork is revealing more golden parachutes for top executives, specifically the two who were brought on to replace Adam Newman. The embattled landlord will have to pay about $17 million to co-CEOs Artie Minson and Sebastian Gunningham if they're fired or leave the company. The exit packages will pay them roughly $8 million each. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Brad Smith from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Thanks for watching. The night starts in about 30 minutes.